everyone this is Ella Aquarela and welcome back to my channel today we're going to be making a really simple wet on wet landscape for beginners I'm gonna be using a reference picture which you can see here this is a picture I took in one of my trips in the past few years I believe this is in Peru in Lima Peru they have beautiful sunsets there so I wanted to do that picture because it has this really vibrant blue on top and this incredibly bright kind of yellowy orange in the horizon with a very high contrast kind of palm trees and shrubs. So I wanted to teach you how to do that. It's really simple. So first I'm gonna start with my materials. I'm gonna be using Paul Rubens 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook. It's important for wet and wet techniques like this that you use 100% cotton paper. You can use other types of paper and try to um, work with the limitations, but it's a lot harder. So this paper, I found that it's really great for wet and wet techniques and for layering. So I think I decided to use this paper for this particular project. I'm gonna be using pretty excellent paints. These are great for beginners not super light fast in some cases but they behave a lot like artist grade paints they disperse really well they move really well so they're a great set of paints to try these techniques with i'm going to be using a couple of brushes silver black velvet number eight one of my favorite brushes that i use a lot and the three quarters um brush forget what this shape is called but it comes in a set of three uh, they're hybrid, so they have a mix of natural and synthetic hairs, and I find them to be really easy to use, and I just keep gravitating towards them, so I use them a lot. You'll see them a lot in my videos. I have a plate for mixing. I like to mix in ceramic or porcelain versus in plastic or metal palettes. It's just my preference. And that's about it, so we can get started. First of all, you need to wet your paper. Make sure it's really, really wet. So this is my water, clean water. And we're just gonna literally wet the whole paper. And you can use any brush to do this. You don't need to use this particular brush. Any brush will do. So get that paper really wet and let it soak in the water for a little bit. We might have to do another pass. And while we're letting that water soak, we're gonna mix our colors and we're gonna put them in our palette. So I'm gonna be using cadmium orange, which is this beautiful orange color that comes in the pretty excellent set. It's great for this landscape. Very vibrant, very clean. And it's quite transparent. So I'm gonna mix that in here. And then I'm gonna mix some red. So I'm gonna use vermilion red, which is a warm red, just to give a different orangey tones to this painting. For the blue of the sky, I'm gonna be using Prussian blue, but I'm gonna actually make the pan wet. I'm gonna wet the pan of the Prussian blue and this is a really intense blue. You can see it here. And I'm not gonna mix that whole thing right now because I think I'm gonna come back when the pan, I mean, these paints really lift really well. I also don't wanna get my water super muddy just yet because I wanna start the landscape with the lightest color. So I'm gonna start this landscape with the yellow. So I actually have two containers of water, one dirty and one clean. This helps to keep your painting from getting muddy and not looking as vibrant as you would like. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this to the side there. I'm gonna look at my paint, um, at my paper, sorry, to make sure it's still wet 
it is but i'm gonna i think i'm gonna go over it once more with the wet brush with clean water so actually before i start painting i realized that i did something wrong and i didn't edit this out because i wanted you guys to understand how to fix problems when this stuff happens now in this picture you have a hard stop of the orange when the water starts and i made the whole paper wet so if i put paint on this paper it's gonna seep into where the ocean supposed to be and i don't want that so i should have just wet the top part of the paper where i want the sky to be so i'm just dabbing the bottom part of this to make sure it's dry and now when i put my orange paint it's not gonna seep to the area where the ocean's gonna be i hope that makes sense so now that i have the top part of the paper wet only the part of the sky i'm gonna start just applying my orange and you see how this color starts to run it's just beautiful i love that one of my favorite things about watercolor is watching the paint run so the reason is why i'm why i'm starting with this orange it's because as we move towards the blue things are gonna start getting muddy this blue is really strong color and i don't want to end up with something that's like green because that blue it looks um, just really vibrant or really staining i'm taking some of this red and i'm just dropping it into the orange and letting it move around i'm tilting my journal to let it move and now you notice there's a pool of water here we want to dry that pool of water so it doesn't create any blooms because then our paper is not gonna dry evenly so I'm just gonna suck some of that paint some of that moisture I should say so now that the orange is there I'm gonna put the blue above on the top part and now the paper is drying a little bit it's still a little moist but it's not gonna run as much as when I applied the orange so I'll have a little bit more control I want to leave a white space between the orange and the blue because I don't want things to turn green on me so usually in the sky we don't find the color green as much as we do in the ocean for example so we want to avoid having any skies that look really green so we're gonna let that run a little bit I have another pool of water here so I'm gonna take a dry brush and I'm gonna soak it up and as you can see maybe you can see that but as I'm tilting my paper that blue paint is running down but it it's not turning into green just yet. Now I want to mix a little bit of that red with the Prussian blue to make uh, some sort of purplish gray color. And I'm going to try To suggest some clouds dark clouds here in the bottom part of this orange not too many because I don't want to lose that vibrancy just a little bit because in the picture I do see some some clouds so I'm gonna let this run just for a little bit. I'm going to tilt it again. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna dry it and I'll be back for the next step. Now that this layer is dry, I mixed a little bit of that orange color with the Prussian blue, just to get it a tad bit on the green, green side, but not too green. And I'm gonna use this to paint a little sliver of ocean. I wanna make sure you can see this. A little sliver of ocean here in the distance. I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of a white edge between the sky and the ocean. And I'm leaving some white spots in the water to give the impression of a reflection of light in the water. So very simple. And now that we have, that's basically the background, now we can do the foreground. So the foreground in the picture is very dark, right? It's um, kind of against the light. So the ideal thing to do would be to make mix a really dark gray, or you can use a black that comes in your palette. If you have a palette that has black, it doesn't have to be this palette, but it can be any palette. It usually brings a few color, complementary colors that you can mix to make a dark black or dark gray. So I'm gonna use the Prussian blue. I'm gonna keep to the original colors that I'm using a limited palette so the painting looks cohesive. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to paint the foreground, literally in my picture, moving all this so you can see the foreground, it's black. You cannot see a lot of detail. So I'm gonna try to follow my picture and this is not meant to be an exact reproduction of the picture but I am getting inspired by the picture so I'm gonna try to keep the painting to look more or less like that so this it's a foreground now there's like a little gazebo over here so I'm gonna start just sketching out the silhouettes of the things that I see in the foreground in this picture. There's like a little gazebo here with like some columns. So we're not gonna have to do a lot of shading here because this is against the light. So you can't really tell, um, you know, everything's in shadow basically. And there are some palm trees here in the distance that are kind of smaller. So I'm gonna try to, like literally sketching those in with my paintbrush as I go. I didn't do any type of pencil sketch. You could, if you feel like you don't wanna ruin your painting and you're not sure, you can try to like dry the paint and then after the paint is dry, you can sketch with, with pencil before you go in with your brush. That is totally fine. So whatever works for you. So here are some palm trees in the background. Just trying to make that. And then there are bigger palm trees that are in the foreground. So I'm just trying to loosely sketch what I see. Doesn't have to be perfect. And again, just using one color, just black for the foreground. So this is really easy for beginners because you don't have to worry so much about shading in the foreground. You don't have to make it look exactly like the picture. 
you can get inspired by the picture and then just do your own representation of what you see. That's the beauty of painting because you're not taking a photograph. It's your own representation of what you see. So here are some like bushes that you see on the side of the painting or the photograph I should say. I might put some clear water there to make the edges of that bush look like there's some leaves or something happening there. Leaving some light coming through here. I'm looking at this gazebo and just making sure that I got most of those details right. I see some bushes here on the side and some little details. So I'm just going to put in more little details that I see. There's like a fence here and some other little bushes. So it gives you the idea that you're looking at a beach that has stuff going on, right? It's not just a beach that has nothing and sand it's a beach where people have parties and gazebos and those little details kind of help you tell the story of what you're seeing so I feel like that's good that really I really like how that came out it kind of it's very high contrast which I love I love high contrast pictures I feel like it they look interesting great and really easy so hopefully you found this useful and easy and it gave you some ideas on what to paint and what to practice it's a great way of practicing wet on wet and washes so i hope you enjoyed that if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this go to my channel and subscribe by following the link below so you can get notifications when I post new videos. All right, well, I'll see you in my next video. Take care, everyone.